How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather Sponge about thousand and today we're gonna focus on this next extreme severe weather threat that could bring significant tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds throughout the Midwest and Southeast by early next week. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather delay content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather delay content. So let's begin right off the bat by taking a look at the GFS model. And if we were to move right around late next week i mean early next week there is a possibility of severe uh severe weather outbreak going on in the midwest because we do see a strong northwesterly flow associated with this low pressure system and we're gonna see a very a very high amount of instability and this jet and this northerly flow should allow for this next trough which is a trough that's expected to bring the severe weather outbreak throughout the midwest and the southeast to move southward and create a very unstable environment where there's going to be a lot of lift in the atmosphere enough for damaging winds large hail and yes including tornadoes because with this trough the trough is going to have a millibar pressure that's very low and that really represents that there's a high amount of instability you see that the pressure drops down to 984 millibars as there's just a lot of lift going on surrounding the center of circulation and it's bound to create an area where the updrafts are going to be intensely strong to the point where we're going to see a significant tornado threat out of this and large hail and damaging winds are certainly likely now there's still uncertainty regarding um the the exact magnitude of the severe weather because of course when we're talking about a system that still has five days left to go before it reaches the midwest there's still a lot that's subject to change within the next several days but i could at least assure you that a uh, major severe weather threat is likely if we were to take a look at how the radar is looking like based on what the gfs model is stating right now look at the heavy thunderstorm bands developing throughout eastern texas southern arkansas and we even see some severe thunderstorms in the northern midwest as well but i think the more the more significant severe weather should be slightly further southward but this will extend further northward as well which would be the first for many of you because of course for the early month of spring for the months of march and even including early april the severe weather doesn't really impact the midwest as often as let's say the southeast but now we're going to begin to see that transition to where the severe weather will eventually move further and further northward and westward as we head closer and closer into the summer months so you see that the thunderstorms that we're now we're seeing thunderstorms develop in the midwest with a high possibility that this will move northward including in areas like illinois potentially missouri could get involved and of course the southeast will get involved with uh with um severe weather so let's take a look at the how the winds are looking like between the low the lower level and the upper levels of the atmosphere you see that there's a decently stark contrast when it comes to wind direction with height and what this means is that when the wind direction changes fast with height then that's bound to create a more significant tornado threat because then that means that there's sort of going to be a uh, um, the winds sor sort of won't correlate with each other and that sort of creates rotation within the cloud tops for um, significant tornado threat to occur with um, in some of these supercell thunderstorms and if we were to take a look at how let's say let's take a look at the winds in an area where the um, where there isn't a lot of instability in the atmosphere you see that the winds all are facing the same direction which is how the which is how the atmosphere is normally like on a typical day and it should be so when we do see a change in wind direction with height that's bound to create a more significant tornado there because of course there's a lot more rotation in the atmosphere when we see the wind vary with height so now so since we're seeing a very uh relatively strong change in wind direction with height with in some embedded in some of these supercell thunderstorms it's safe to assume that we're gonna see a tornado threat out of this and of course large hail and damaging winds will be uh issue as well so there's gonna be quite a strong mid-latitude cyclone type low pressure system and we're gonna even gonna see snow just on the northern side 
of this so make sure to watch out in the northern midwest for a potential blizzard going on thanks to how um, windy we could potentially see this storm become at 984 millibars but let's take a look at the convective potential energy levels to really show you guys the magnitude of how much lift there will be in the atmosphere so there's going to be a first small chop that's going to move through i'd say right around the monday time frame and we do see a decent level of convective available potential energy where we even see it peaking around 2000 this should be your first wave of severe weather however i don't expect it to be as significant as the next wave which should arrive more right around Tuesday because look at the convective potential energy levels by Tuesday or very late on Monday. You see that we're seeing levels um, close to 3,000 and in some cases I have been seeing convective potential energy levels over 3,000 and you see headed into Wednesday it's even more significant. We're seeing the dark reds which is an extreme amount of convective potential energy which is an extreme worry for a lot of the midwest as you guys need to pay close attention to this where we do see a large area that's experiencing levels over 3000 and that's going to create enough lift in the atmosphere the updrafts will be strong enough to create a large hail threat because what creates hail is just a very strong updraft that's forcing a lot of the um, rain droplets to move into the higher altitudes of the atmosphere where of course it's a lot colder it freezes and then as the and as the ice really um, and since the ice becomes a little bit too heavy it eventually falls down in the form of hail so so with um with energy levels like this we're bound to experience a major hail threat and of course damaging winds since the pressure along the surface will be very low so that's only something to keep in mind throughout the midwest um head in and this should happen like i said i think the first round should happen around monday but i do expect it to become more significant by maybe around the tuesday time frame where um you see that the second wave will be associated with this trough right here and it's it's going to move quite fast to the west where you see that by um, by late monday into early tuesday the low pressure system is still right around the pacific northwest only go less than 24 hours out it's already in the midwest which shows that this storm is going to move quite fast and um, this should impact you guys Tuesday night throughout the Midwest and of course into early Wednesday you guys still should experience severe weather and I and there is a possibility this extends further eastward as well because the jet stream dip won't go away we're still going to see a strong northerly flow and that could allow for a severe weather to move further eastward as well which um, we need to see how significant this jet stream dip will be but I think it's pretty much inevitable that it's significant enough to see a severe your web threat so make sure to keep that in mind throughout the midwest but we still need to pay close attention to how powerful this low pressure system will be because that will be huge in determining the northerly flow component but so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to that but um, I'd say severe weather threat is likely throughout the Midwest, so make sure to pay close attention to that. And um, as a result of the higher confidence of a severe weather threat, if we were to take a look at the outlook, the severe weather outlook provided from the National Hurricane, I mean Weather Service, you see that the chance of severe weather has now expanded. And while it only says 15%, don't take that with a major grain of salt because it typically the chance is always typically low when we're talking about a forecast that's beyond the four day mark but it inevitably rises as we head closer and closer um, um into the actual event so i do expect expect the severe weather chance to go way up over the next coming days and i still do expect the severe weather outlook to expand like I said yesterday that it would expand and it did expand today. So I, so I'd say the severe, the major severe weather sh um, um, threat should expand over a large area of the Midwest, including the Southeast. So make sure to be aware of that. Now, I'm taking a look 
at the exact area where I'm expecting the worst of the severe weather. So throughout eastern Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, this is where I'm expecting the worst of severe weather. And you see, compared to the map I made yesterday, you see that now I'm bringing down that area of major severe weather further southward to where it's impacting Texas, Louisiana. And I wouldn't be surprised if I begin to make the shift further eastward when it comes to where exactly the major severe weather that will be um, as we um, as it may become more evident that we're going to see the severe weather shift further eastward as well. So make sure to pay close attention to that. This includes cities such as Dallas. This includes Shreveport, Louisiana, Little Rock, Arkansas, St. Louis, um, Missouri. The, these areas could experience a major severe weather outbreaks and significant tornadoes are i'd say likely at this point at least in one of these areas in the midwest um we're gonna need to narrow down the forecast of exactly where the worst will be but i'd say it should be in this area for the most part so make sure to pay close attention to that um now taking a look at the current radar another thing i want to point out in this video is that the northeast should experience very heavy rainfall tonight where you see that there are a bit of thunder showers developing along this cold front that's moving through or along this mid latitude cycle moving through and i think that could cause a chance of flash flooding and it's gonna and this rain is gonna come on top of the heavy rain you experience all day today throughout the northeast like i'm here in northern new jersey and it's just been raining all day and now we're gonna receive these thunder showers right now so it's definitely concerning that this could raise um the concern for flooding as flood watches are issued throughout a large area so make sure to be aware that there could be a chance of a flash flood warning embedded in one of these thunderstorms at night so it's best to stay indoors especially since it um now i'm starting to hear thunder right outside my window right now so make sure to be aware that there might be a flood threat associated with these rain showers throughout the northeast so make sure to keep that in mind um this thunderstorms won't necessarily be severe there isn't enough lift in the atmosphere for that to occur but we should see heavy rain throughout the northeast for tonight but yeah, guys, I guess that's it for this video. I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather lake concert. Make sure to like if you do enjoy this video. And make sure to share with friends and family um, just to make sure they're prepared and if they're interested in this type of content. And I hope you guys all have a great day.